In the quiet, sunlit streets of Glenel, a beachside suburb of Adelaide in South Australia, the 26th of January, 1966, began just like any other day. It was Australia Day, and the weather was perfect for a day at the beach. Three siblings, Jane, aged nine, Arna, aged seven, and Grant Beaumont, just age four, requested a day out, a trip to Glenel Beach, a place they visited countless times before. Little did anyone know, this ordinary day would spiral into one of Australia's most infamous unsolved mysteries. As was the norm in the more innocent era of the 1960s, children had more freedom, and it wasn't unusual for kids to venture out unsupervised. On this fateful day, the Beaumont children set off for the beach, just a short five-minute bus ride from their home. Their mother, Nancy Beaumont, gave them the fare and instructions to return home by 2 p.m. for lunch. The siblings, full of life and enthusiasm, left home, promising to be back on time. But 2 p.m. came and went, and the Beaumont children never returned. Yes. When their father, Jim Beaumont, returned from his work as a postman, the alarm was raised. As dusk fell, the worried parents notified the police, and thus began one of the largest scale investigations in Australian history. The three missing children. That is absolutely important. And also make sure your friends are aware of the descriptions of these children. And also if you have any new Australian friends, perhaps you can, you can assist them in describing the, the children to them. Two girls, one nine, one seven, and a little four-year-old boy, and they have brown eyes. Witnesses claim to have seen the children leaving the beach with a tall, blonde man in his mid-30s. The kids seemed happy and in high spirits, showing no signs of distress. This sighting triggered the notion that the children had likely been abducted. So the first thing, over here towards this ridge. Right, you can break line now and come over. The Beaumont children's disappearance sent shockwaves through the Adelaide community. It shattered the innocence and security of the time, instigating a change in how children were supervised. In the face of such a heinous act, the community rallied together in support, the air thick with the desperate hope of finding the Beaumont children safe and sound. While the case was widely publicized, and despite a plethora of leads and extensive investigations, the trail would inevitably turn cold. The mystery man spotted with the children at the beach was never found, and no trace of the children has ever surfaced. The manhole in, uh, in the Broadway. That's true. Now, do you believe that the children are in this pipe? Do you think that there's a possibility they could be there? A nation was left in a state of shock and bewilderment, haunted by the smiling faces of the Beaumont children. Their disappearance remains etched into the Australian psyche, symbolizing an end to the carefree and safe era many once knew. Yet, the case isn't entirely forgotten. Uh, I really feel, feel for us. And, um, um, uh, well, what can you say at this moment? I mean, we've been hanging on for nine months. Over the years, it's been revisited multiple times, with advancements in technology and forensic science bringing forth new hope. For example, ground-penetrating radar was used in recent years to examine an Adelaide factory previously owned by a person of interest in the case. However, no definitive evidence has been found to date. Despite these efforts, the Beaumont children's fate remains unknown, transforming their story into a heartbreaking enigma of Australian history. There's been a multitude of suspects, numerous tip-offs, and numerous excavations, all in the hope of providing closure to this decades-long mystery. One of the more persistent leads involved a man named Bevan Spencer von Einem. He was a convicted murderer, known for the chilling family murders that played Adelaide in the late 70s and early 80s. A conversation overheard in prison led investigators to consider von Einem as a possible suspect in the Beaumont case. Yet despite his heinous track record, no tangible evidence could link him to the Beaumont children's disappearance. Another theory emerged around the so-called Satyananda, an obscure religious group. The group resided in a rural campsite during the time of the children's disappearance. A tip-off in 2016 suggested the children might have been victims of this sect. Still, despite the alarming nature of the claim, nothing concrete surfaced from the subsequent investigations. 
Yet, the most compelling lead centered around Harry Phipps, a businessman and factory owner in Adelaide. His own son accused him of being involved in the Beaumont children's disappearance. Eyewitness accounts and a controversial book, The Satin Man, also suggested Phipps' potential involvement. His factory site became the subject of multiple excavations, but no conclusive evidence has been found. In an unanticipated twist, the case even reached the doors of a renowned Dutch clairvoyant, Gerard Croiset. In 1966, Croiset was flown in from the Netherlands in a bid to provide insight into the children's location. He pointed to a warehouse area where he believed the children's bodies were buried. Although a large-scale excavation was undertaken at the specified location, it, unfortunately, did not yield any meaningful results. Each of these leads, while initially promising, eventually hit a dead end, leaving more questions than answers. The Beaumont case has been a maze of twists and turns, with every possible lead seemingly leading to a dead end. But despite the challenges and heartbreak, the search for answers still continued. The mystery surrounding the Beaumont children continues to baffle. It's important to understand the impact of this case on criminology, and how it has shaped the methodologies used in such investigations today. The introduction of psychological profiling, a tool not extensively used at the time, found its way into the investigative process of this case. The event made the authorities realize that they needed to dive deeper into understanding the psyche of a potential perpetrator. In the absence of physical evidence or suspects, psychological profiling was employed to construct a possible persona of the person involved in the abduction, these profiles are drawn up by analyzing patterns in the crime, potential motivations, and even the choice of victims. In the case of the Beaumont children, the fact that three siblings were abducted in broad daylight in a public place suggested to experts that the perpetrator was likely an individual with a high risk threshold and little concern for societal norms or potential consequences. In the aftermath of the case, the wider community's response was overwhelming. A reward fund was set up, which saw contributions from all sections of society, growing into one of the largest public reward offers in the state's history. This communal unity and public engagement were early instances of society's role in criminal investigations, a phenomenon now commonly observed in the age of social media. It is also important to note how this case influenced Australian society and child safety laws. The Beaumont children's disappearance was a significant catalyst for change, with parents becoming more protective and cautious about their children's safety, leading to stricter safety measures and laws. This perplexing case that has baffled investigators for more than half a century is not merely a relic of the past, but a constant driving force for progress in crime-solving techniques. The advancements in DNA testing, facial reconstruction, and data analysis inspired by cases like this continue to offer a glimmer of hope for solving long-standing mysteries. So thank you for tuning in and join us next time as we continue to unearth and analyze more such cases in our future videos. And as always, stay curious, stay safe, and let's dive into the mysteries of our world together.